All right, glory to the king. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we always bless your magnificent name. We thank you for everything that you've done for us as your people. Continually put us in remembrance of your law, statutes, and commandments. Keep us closer to you. Thank you for redeeming us in this late hour that we're in. Um, help us in our understanding to give us an appreciation of who we are as a people. Uh, so that we can have an expected end. Uh, bless the Israelites that are scattered abroad throughout this diaspora, this land, in the magnificent name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Speak to us your words of truth. Amen. Um, maybe see this real. We, um, we're going to start embarking on a study of the prophets. Um, and, and, and the reason being... You know, understanding, like the word says, is, is a wellspring of life. Um, and uh, it's very important for us to understand what the prophets and them understood in their day and time and hour. Um, because there's much to be desired. Uh, I, I kid you not. Because when we read, you know, uh, the modern translation of scriptures, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a very daunting task. Um, and, and, you know, and, and, and what we're doing is getting a, an understanding of what covenant is and what it's all about. It's more uh, than, than just us having agreements. Our, this covenant is bigger than that. Um, we also want to see the, the attitude of the men of Yah way back then. If you understand, and, and how that, well, since we're seeking for the old paths, that we need to restore these things that has been lost to us. Okay, so we have a, uh, a bunch of points and facts going forward here. Um, when you read the prophet Hosea from an English perspective, you read it and you automatically assume that you understand what is being said. Um, but then, then when you read it through the eyes of an Eastern perspective from a Hebraic culture, all of a sudden you find yourself in a whirlwind. Uh, you find there's a lot of thunder, but there ain't no rain. Um, and and it's, it's, a, it's a very, very serious task to try to bring understanding of the prophets who were all Hebrews uh, when we look through the lenses of an English mindset. Am I making sense? And that's why we've missed so much. And, and we understand very little. Um, there, there's a, a lot of ambiguities written in, in this book. Um, we're going to do whatever we can to recover and put us on the right path. It, it, it's, um, it really truly is a task. It really truly is. And, and you'll see as we go on here. But I think that through labor, through much labor and prayer, that we'll, we'll have an expected end here. Um, we have an understanding of what the word divorce means uh, in this culture. And we make the mistake of, of viewing this book through this culture. And that's why we're still in the shape and condition that we're in, if you understand what I mean. Because we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Um, and and um, when we read 
what Moses said in the law. Now, we have an understanding over in Dabarine 24 uh, of what he, he says about it. Uh, and, of course, we know that that law stands and it, and it doesn't change. Um, there are provisions for a writ or get or a bill of divorcement. Um, but we, we see that these laws, when they were given to Israel, they were given to Israel to um, people who were going to inhabit the promised land. So we had to, you know, Yahweh had to set precedence, had to establish order. All of a sudden, we, we, we go years down the road where we, this was what Hosea is about, we're in the Assyrian captivity. And, um, and, and, and Israel is just like our character and nature have been throughout history, is cutting the food. Um, but it's hard to, to understand why Hosea continually kept wanting this woman of whoredoms back. Um, because again, when you try to define things from an e English perspective, it's going to mess with your mind. You have to be Hebraic. You really truly do in order to make sense of, of what's happening and taking place. So we, we see from the prophet Hosea, as well as the, the rest of the prophets. We have to judge and, and see how that they viewed um, this breaking of the covenant that the um, northern tribes of Israel did and how that the Most High dealt with it. And the only way we can see this is, is we have to put the prophets together. And of course, the prophets that was really truly dealing with a lot of rebellion at that time was Jeremiah um, and Isaiah um, and, and Hosea. They were all, you know, pretty much in the same, if you understand what I mean, in, in, in the same situation there, okay? Um, so we're going to understand how that the prophets and, and how it associates with us today um, what they understood then because remember their um, prophecy they, there's a bunch of metaphors and there's allegory there's allegorical ways you can look at this but but remember if it's happening in the natural then there's the spiritual side and and so the father is actually um, when he is pleading with us and he's he's trying to get us to understand what is going on because remember he would have his prophets to go through a lot of stuff I mean who will want to eat dung who will want to sleep on your side, one side for a certain amount of time, then turn over on another side, and who will want to walk through Israel butt naked to show the shame? And, and see, and, and, the, and, and the pro, you know, Yahweh had his mouthpieces to do these things to show us what we were really truly doing to him. Am I making any sense? And, and how that, um, he has strenuously, through time, done everything that he, he, has can, he could to recover us. Until finally he just had to put the house of Israel away. He had to give her a bill of divorcement. And so at times you'll read in here and it seems like that it's finished um, and it's um, set towards an end. Uh, but the truth is, is, it's really not finished set towards an end because you have the, the actual factual task happening right before our very eyes and then you have the prophecy that had to be fulfilled and we're on the prophecy end uh, of the fulfillment of it okay we're on the prophecy end of it all right so it it has to be understood from these time frames what the prophets were speaking about all right and hopefully we'll be able to see ourselves and see how that these prophets they were men they, they were men. They were men that loved the Father, uh, no, no doubt about it. So, you know, we, we read many times in translation that, that the word wife, wife, wife could be um, woman. Um, husband could be also translated as friend. So, you, you, you know, you have to know all this, and, and it's, I'm going to make an attempt here, you know, this, this evening. I'm going to make an attempt here to try to give us a little bit of uh, uh, understanding, but it is 
predicated upon you having some working knowledge of the scriptures. Are you following me? I mean, y'all came up with the answer to the trivial question that I gave the other night on the broadcast. I know Elder Donnie did. He was on it. I didn't, wasn't even finished with the broadcast. He was on it. <laughs> Just about. Well, and uh, Brother Scott, he emailed me. And so we'll go ahead and give you the answer uh, before we go ahead and get started here. Um, it was the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites are the one over in Joshua, the ninth chapter, um, that they deceived Israel into a covenant. Um, and the reason why they deceived them into a the covenant because they didn't want um, what they saw happening to the other surrounding nations happening to them. <laughs> And so they were doing everything they could to save their hide. Are you following me? And um, you would have done the same. And then later on, uh, Saul and his band um, wanted to go break covenant. You know, Saul was just a rebel. Man. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just amazing. Uh, but the Most High made Israel honor the covenant. Because that's what he's all about. He's about you he honoring your contract, honoring your agreement, honoring your covenant. He, I mean, he is, he is um, what do you say, just. And even though you, you made a league when you wasn't supposed to, you, and now you've done it, you're going to go through with it. And guess what? He, he has never, ever, even though he had put away the house of Israel. Are right, you following me? He is, we, we should thank him for his attitude um, because, you know, he's still in covenant. He's still in league. He's still in agreement with us um, way, way, way back then. Are you following me? Uh, so we're going to see here that Hosea, while he had no obligation whatsoever at all to redeem Gomer, he didn't want to redeem her. As a matter of fact, he, he had no obligation to redeem her. He just chose to redeem her the same way that the father chose to redeem us. Are you following me? So we understand that first that which is natural and, and then uh, that which is spiritual. But we're going to go ahead and get started because we have a little ground to cover here. And if I'm going a little bit too fast, thank y'all for the video. All right, but we're going to get some understanding here. All right. Now, remember, when we're looking at this account right here, we need to take a good look at ourselves of where we're at right now. Are y'all listening to me? Because, again... If I said it once, I said it a thousand times. It's one thing for us to know that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and the history of them, you know what I mean, and, and, and Daniel and the, and the den and, and all that, but it, all of those are good accounts and good stories, but you need to know the significance of it. How does it impact? How does it apply to you today? Because if you look at these things as just fairy tales, you'll view them as a fairy tale and you'll make light of Yah's word, and you'll be sinning. You'll be sinning against your own soul. And that's the problem that we have today is we're not serious enough about what we're doing and who we are as a people. Am I making sense, Israel? All right. Um, so there must be a soberness about us as we go forward, especially since we're nearer today than when we first began. And we're definitely nearer today when all these writings took place. Hallelujah. All right, Israel, the unfaithful wife of Yahweh, that's us, our people. Prophet of the northern kingdom, Hosea. The Assyrians were wiping out a number of smaller kingdoms around them. And, of course, um, it, it was showing us in captivity again, like we're so used to, you know, being in a captivity, like we're even in captivity now. And you wouldn't know that you were in captivity if somebody didn't stand up and tell you, look here, Israel, you are still in captivity. You are not in your homeland that Yah promised to Abraham. And when you got there, you couldn't keep it because you wanted to be like everybody else around you. And what is our problem today? We're still in slavery, loving it, and we want to be like everybody else around us. Are you following me? And that's why the prophet said that he was going to be like little sanctuaries, each one of us. Because, I mean, it's only going to be a few here and a few there and a few here and a few there. Are you understand? Now, Hosea's marriage to this promiscuous woman, this woman of whoredoms, is significant about the way our behavior was towards him. Because we can't see what we're doing to the father. 
unless one of his prophets get out in front of us and show us exactly what's going on. Are you following me? So that's the reason why y'all will put the prophets through all these things because we're blinded to ourselves. For some reason, we're just totally blinded, but we really truly need to be waking up. Now, Hosea marriage is a very real relationship and a metaphor, meaning that there's some hidden comparisons that are going on both naturally and spiritually for you to be able to fuse together what, what's really going on. But it's important for us to understand. I know that out there in, in Christianity that they try to make you think that there's a major prophet and minor prophets. No, they were prophets. And there were nothing major or minor. All of them and all their words mean something and carried a lot of weight. Are you following me? They were Yahweh's mouthpieces. And I still say that their um, uh, voices are still being echoed even still today when we are fortunate enough to read these writings, but we still have a gauntlet to, go, to get through. You know, because we're looking at this book through what? English eyes. Are y'all first? I need, it's important that I continue to keep pushing that. And you don't understand because when the people, when the translators wrote this Bible, are you following me? They translated it, but they also translated with their culture influencing their minds. Are y'all making any sense? That, but they were, that, I'm telling you. It, it's it, you know I'm long. I've been for for years. I've been pounding, unlearn, and practice it. Are you following? So that you can learn. So that's the reason why I did it. You know, or if early on it seemed like I was trying to go around the way in, in order to put things together, get you to understand, is because you know I realized that these men were doing the best that they could given the language barrier. Are you following me? But it, it's obvious. That's the reason why even on the Supreme Court that they, they, they have, what is it, nine of them on the Supreme Court? And of course, that one is always decisive. All right, they're all five, four, five, four. And the reason being, because whether you like it or not, people are going to vote their conscience. If you have morals, you're going to vote for your morals to bring forth morality. You may have a black robe on to disguise your mind and everything else, but really, truly, there's something else that is inside of you that is going to influence your judgment. And so since they knew this, they, they said, okay, we need nine of them. Okay? All right? So, and and that's, that's why it's important for us. I know I'm stressing this, and I'll continue to keep stressing it, that when you're reading the prophets, you cannot look at them from a European, English, Western perspective that's the reason why people having difficulty out there calling me all kind of names and and uh, making all these different uh, disparity comments because they think they understand but they don't understand which if they would get themselves you know rock back a little bit clear their mind in the air take a deep breath and really look into what I'm saying then maybe they understand it would be open I mean because after all here's my job is to feed you with knowledge and understanding all right now, I'm going to skip around here in the books in order to, uh, to try to fuse this thing together because we're going to go straight to the second chapter after we get finished, okay? Uh, we understand the first one. We understand that Hosea um, and, and, and Gomer, well, Hosea had one Jezreel, and Gomer had two that was born of whoredoms, uh, two daughters. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. We'll get ahead of myself. But Hosea 2-2, two, two, plead with your mother. Plead. Plead, plead. Now, this is Hosea talking to Jezreel. And, and um, he's telling you, I want you to go. <laughs> and I really want you to try to contend with your mom. I want you to try to talk some sense into this woman right here. Because this woman's basically lost her mind. Okay? So, <laughs> you need to talk to her. and You need to try to, you know her. You need to get in, into her, her mind. You need to chat. You need to bring forth complaints. You need to do whatever you can. To get this woman's attention. That's what it means, plead. For she is not my wife. Now, again, you're going to deal with mental gymnastics here if you don't understand exactly what's going on. If he says he's not his wife, he's not his wife. And that's the reason why you have to draw your conclusions from Jeremiah and Isaiah. And then put them together to understand exactly what he's saying. When he says he's not my wife, that's exactly what he's saying. All right? Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adultery from between her breasts. 
Because you remember in the law, if a woman committed adultery, she got stoned to death. So we're watching in captivities while the law is still standing. We're, we're watching. And remember, divorce also means separation, which also is death. All right? But what we're watching, you know, not so much a change, but we're watching the attitude of, of Yahweh, us in captivity. When these laws, even though they're applied, they're not applying because we're under so many different influences. And so he has to deal with because, I mean, if, if he didn't have some type of leniency, there would be no nation of Israel. We'd have been wiped out by our enemies, totally, completely annihilated. Are right, you following me? All right. So we're going to go to the scriptures version, Hosea 10, 13. You have plowed wrongness. This is Israel. All right. You have reaped unrighteousness. Where do we learn all this from? We learned it from the heathens. We learned it from, and, and, and only that, we, we thought we could get over. We thought we could get advantage. We, it's called dishonest gain. We didn't want to be righteous, man. We, we thought that the nation was getting over and we was envying them and, and being jealous towards our oppressors and stuff. And so we, we thought that we was getting the short end of the stick. And y'all was doing us wrong. Are you following me? You have eaten the fruit of lying because you trusted in your own way in your many mighty men. We got to the point now that we, we don't even trust with the Father no more. We, we was trusting in our power, trusting in our might, trusting in our strong arm and stuff, and we wasn't leaning on him anymore. The question is the same today as it was back then. Who are you going to trust, human leaders of the nations or Yahweh? Who do you think America trusts in? They trust in the military might of the United States of America. And I'm telling you, there's never been a, there's never been a military like our military. Not on the face of planet Earth, nor in the history of mankind. You just don't understand. Hallelujah. All right. Hosea 1 6. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. And he said to him, Call her name Loromula. For I no longer, for no longer do I have compassion on the house of Israel. Y'all hear that? So as to forgive them at all. This is a very serious indictment. What the father is doing here is developing a lawsuit. This is what's taking place right here. Israel is being indicted by the father himself. All right. But I shall have compassion on the house of Yehuda, Judah, the lawgiver, all right, and save them by Yahweh, their Elohim, and not save them by bow or by sword or by battle or by horses or horsemen. In other words, it's not going to be none of this physical power and might that you're going to be saved by. You're going to be saved by not by power, nor by might, but by my what? All right, going back to the King James, Hosea 8, 7. For they have sown the wind, and they have reaped the whirlwind. It had no stock, the bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield. The strangers shall swallow it up. I mean, everything we put our hand to, the strangers and everything around is going to devour it. Totally. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles. We are still among the Goyims even now. As a vessel wherein is no pleasure. That's prophecy taking place right there. I mean, no matter where we go on this earth, we're despised and rejected. We're the all scouring earth, earth. We have no honor. We're always the tail end of everything, including here in Roman America. Are you following me? So the prophecy is, is coming true. There's one thing where you think you can be like these nations only to get over there because you're y'all's people and find out that you're going to be the ass and not the head. It's amazing. And so many Israelites, the wicked ones, they said, forget it. They just went ahead and just denied Yahweh all the way around. And that's why there's a lot of emphasis um, that the apostles put on and says, you know what? No, you, you're in the time now. You see, you don't deny him with, with, with your lips, but you do it in your works. That, that's the problem that we're having today is that we have stage players. We have hypocrites amongst us. All right. So what is the bottom line? Israel has to pay for her infidelity. She has to pay for it. 
all right, against Yahweh. She's going to pay for all these whoredoms. And that's why I keep reminding us over and over again that while we're getting ready to come up out of this captivity because of Dabarim 30 tells us what would take place if we would turn back to the Father with a repentant heart that he will begin to restore. And, and we're on the edge of this thing. Are you following me? And that's the blessing that we're looking for. Are you following me? But, but you can see that all these prophecies, that even though they was said thousands and thousands of years ago, they're coming to pass even still till day. All right? This is all about a covenant relationship with the Father. Understand this. Separation is termination of a contract or a covenant or an agreement. Adultery in the law was punishable by death. Later on, we see that Yahweh gives Israel a writ or a get or a bill of divorcement. Any way you want to say it. So we're going to go back to the, to the law in order to get understanding as we step forward, okay? All right. Leviticus 18.20. Moreover, thou shalt not lie cardinally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Why? There's a law in there. You, thou, you should not commit adultery. Is that right? All right. Davarim 7.2. And when Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, no show mercy unto them. So no matter who you're surrounded by, and, and notice, I want you to understand the speech. Understand the cadence of the apostles as well as the prophets. You can still see that he has the same sentiments today. Except we read in our translations today Instead of not being with them and making league with them and covenant with them, we, we receive directions. Come out of her, my people. Be ye separate, say of Yahweh. Touch not the unclean thing. And the nations were unclean. Are you following me? Then he said he would be our Yahweh and our Elohim, and then we would be his people. So you see, even though now he, then he was telling them, I don't want you to even associate with these people, make any covenant. Now you're in here, I want you to come out. So it's still separation, total separation. Right, why? Because he don't need you to continually deal with all these challenges and all these influences on your mind and stuff to, that's going to entice you to break covenant with him. So see, they were warned to stay away, now we're warned to come out. <laughs> Is that making any sense? And you see how little people understand this message today. You understand what I mean? Yeah, they're coming out that even though that you're here in this land and stuff, you're going to have to move geographical locations to show that you're out. And I, and I make it as clear as possible. Get out of the city. Get out into the wilderness. That's either way it goes. You're going to end up in the wilderness for Israel. Have you not read Revelation 12? Revelation 12, you're going to get in the wilderness. There's a place prepared for you out there. So it's better for you to get your mind ready and set now to be able to handle it because if you get out there and start this murmuring and complaining, there's going to be some swift judgment repeating the same mistakes of the past again. All right, ignorance of the law, no excuse. He used to wink. He's not winking anymore. All right. Joshua 23, 6. Be ye therefore very courageous. See our attitude going forward? To keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moshe. That ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. That ye come not among these nations. Y'all hear that? These that remain among you neither make mention of the name of their gods. Y'all hear that? Nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave. Unto Yahweh, your Elohim, as ye have done unto this day. Y'all hear that? That's supposed to be our relationship. We're supposed to cleave, and we really need to be cleaving now. We need to be clutching. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me, Israel? All right, here in America, with this relaxed attitude we have towards serving the Father, um, has us in a lot of trouble still because this is not being regenerated nor transformed. See, the only way this is going to be transformed, you have to first be willing to have this transformed. Now, let's go back. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the what? Good of the land. And let's tell the truth. Today, when you look at some of us, our mind is really truly not willing. It's really not that hard to obey the Father. 
You heard me early on dealing in the videos. Well, you, you know, if I get the understanding, then I'll go. Then it wouldn't be faith. No, you already are not intelligent enough to know what's going on in the first place. And if you are or you believe yourself to be intelligent, then you carry a, a high lofty opinion of yourself that I don't share. Are y'all here with me? So humility is a virtue. It's a serious virtue that we need going forward so we don't stumble and continue to keep stumbling and making these mistakes, all right? All right. But no doubt this culture has relaxed the fear of Yah from us. And the Most High is not going to force any of us to love him. Are you following me? That's the reason why, you know, the home and... and and, and, and getting back to the covenant agreement the way that the father has, you know, the patriarchal rule in the home. If you can really truly understand this, then you'll understand the way that the father intended for us to be with him. Is that right? The same thing that was happening back then are the same conditions that we're facing today. This is why we have to come out of her and separate ourselves from the peoples of this land, lest we continue to be like them. Huh? Well, you're not supposed to envy them, but then when you turn around and see what they got, you start envying, don't you? Let's go back to Hoshi 4.1, all right? Here we go. Hear the word of Yahweh, you children of Israel. For Yahweh has a case. Told you it was a lawsuit developing, didn't I? Against the inhabitants of the land. For there is no truth. Y'all hear that? There is no truth or, look at this, kindness. Not only just is there no truth, but there's no what? Kindness. And what's the messages we've been getting lately? How to love, isn't it? How to really, truly love. Why? Because we're far from the kindness that we should be having. We're not tender-hearted towards each other the way that the scriptures teaches us and tell us that we should be. We don't look at each other with compassion and a deep sense of belonging like we should. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because we learn how to be like the inhabitants of this land. And we are not turning with him with a true repented heart. So he said there's no truth in the land. All right. And there's no kindness. For the knowledge of Elohim. Who? Who wants it now? Have y'all seen my, my last series of videos coming out on YouTube? They've been Blast City in that truck. They have been Blast City. Somebody, and most people go, well, you, you really truly don't act like you. I said, isn't that something? You think you know me. That's remarkable. You, you know me. Never met me. Don't know me, but you know me by one video. I'm amazed. Swearing and lying and murdering and stealing and committing adultery have increased. Is that not true today? Tell me it's not true today. Hmm? And we're not speaking metaphorically either. This ain't no allegory right here. This is flat out truth. This is the conditions we're faced with. And bloodshed flows. Bloodshed. Follows bloodshed. Isn't that true? Therefore the land mourns. And everyone living there languishes. I mean look. On the west coast the water's being dried up. The ice caps is melting. We, we have all different types of tsunamis, hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes taking place in diverse places all over the world. The earth is moaning. It's travailing. You know why? Because it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Yah. So it's, it's talking to us. You better get your hearts right. Because ready or not, here he comes. And the earth is talking to us. Yeah, oh yes sir. The rest of the world... Ah, it's just an act of God. But to us, it's communication from the Father what the prophets had already told us what it was going to be. The land mourns and everyone living there languishes. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea are taken away. Go for all, spill, huh? Israel's adultery, both naturally and spiritually, is the problem. Whoredoms. When you claim to be Yahweh's people and serve other gods like Easter, Christmas, Sunday, you are committing adultery against Yahweh. 
then that's what America's getting ready to do, have one big adultery fest. That's what they're doing. And, and they have spread themselves so wide open that they're saying, I don't care, look at me, here I is. And it happens every single year. And no matter how much you talk about it, no matter how much you talk about it, they still don't see it. I guess that old prophecy that said every man is right in his own eyes is holding true, isn't it? Y'all commands Hosea to marry a woman who is a whore. Gomer's firstborn, is, his name is Jezreel. Now y'all plans to punish Jehu for the slaughter of the house of Ahab. All right? I have had no favor in the eyes of Yahweh, yet the law teaches us to never rise up your hand against Yahweh's anointed. Y'all hearing that? Never rise up your hand against Yahweh's anointed, or, or your hand also means this, against Yahweh's anointed. Are right, you following me? So we have to be careful with our loose lips. And we can learn some attitude here. Let's go to um, Shemu, Aleph, or 1 Samuel 24:10. See this day, and this is what Dawid has said, all right, listen to this. See this day your eyes have seen that Yahweh gave you today into my hand. He's speaking to Saul, is that right? King Saul, all right, in, in the cave. And one said, slay you. That's what his, your advisors told him. Yeah. Go ahead and get him. But look what Dawid said, man of understanding, man after y'all's own heart. He said, but my eye pardon you, and I said, I do not stretch out my hand, against my master for he is the anointed of Yahweh because you touch the anointed you're going to be touching Yahweh whether right. you like it or not All right, folks, we don't have this kind of honor or respect today why because we think just like the nations our fear of Yah is taught to us by the precept of man and we have departed we have departed from his precepts and as a result we act like a bunch of mad beast with that kind of nature but Dawid said to Abishag, look at this, do not destroy him, for who shall stretch out his hand against the anointed of Yahweh and be guiltless? That's why you're watching a lot of people twice dead and plucked up by the roots. You're watching these dogs return to their vomit and stuff. So, you know, whether you believe me to be Yah's anointed or not is another story because I didn't bring you here. You got here on your own and Yahweh must have ordered your steps. You may have changed your tune and changed your station after you got here and stuff because the way was a little too narrow. I mean, people get discouraged because of the way. Are you following? That doesn't mean I've changed my position whatsoever at all. And I use me as an example because we need to understand this going forward. Are you following me? We really truly do for our own sakes. Hallelujah. I said the other day, I said, you know, it's amazing how we oppose the men of Yah who have proven themselves time and time and time again and yet and still we're not in the position nor have the strength or power to do what they're doing. We need to humble ourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This rejection is not only how Yahweh deals with Israel but also how Hosea deals with Gomer for her unfaithfulness. To give us an example the way that the father deals and thinks about us and you men really and truly need to be paying attention. What was Hosea's plans to do with his unfaithful wife? We need to know these plans. Is that correct? Hosea 2.2. 2, here we go. Plead with your mother again. Plead for she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight. And her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked. What did Hosea say he was going to do to her? Strip her naked. Most of you men today, you women start, your wife start cutting the food. You can't talk like this because you're too cowardly. You're too busy catering to them because of this feminist movement and the, the uh, you know, all of this pressure that is put up on you because of this culture and this society. You forgot how to be a man. And today, if you see a man talking to a woman like this and stuff who's cutting the food, first thing you do is go run to her skirt and, and try to protect her. It's a sad situation. I mean, really, I, I told you, I, a lot of women today like a bunch of mysterious monsters. Why? Because look, at, look at the, just take a look. The only ones that don't fit that bill are the holy daughters of Zion. Hosea told Jezreel, you need to go and plead with your mama. Because if not, I'm going to strip her and set her as in the day she was born. In other words, I'm going to 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if she won't be exposed, I'm going to expose her, all right? Just like she was when she came out of mother's womb. And make her as a wilderness and set her in a dry land and slay her with thirst. In other words, I'm not going to provide for her either. I'm not going to give her no financial help and the blessings. Now, you breaking covenant, cutting a fool on me and then expect me to support you? What man is there like this today? There's only a few of us. Isn't that true? There's only a few of us that way today. Lest I strip her naked and expose her as on the day she was born, and I will also make her like a wilderness. I will make her like a desert land and slay her with thirst. Look at this. Hosea again, 4 2, 2 4. And this is what Yahweh did to us. The northern kings of Israel, 10 tribes. He did that too. And I will not have mercy upon her, what? So Pastor Dow don't seem like such a harsh judge today then, does he? See, the problem with a lot of us is our wicked heart gets in the way of righteous judgment. And we always want to call Pastor Dow. He's a cold, evil, wicked, hard man. And I be asking myself all the time, am I sure these people are reading the same book that I'm reading? Do they understand the same father I'm understanding or how I'm on planet Orc or something like this? Like I said, well, do I need to click my boots together, my heels, in order to wake up from this dream I'm in? I say, like, I'm not mad. You mad. This Hosea is a man. I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be children of whoredoms. Also, I will have no compassion on her children, because they are children of holotry. That's what Hosea is saying. Look at this now. Verse 5, for their mother played the what? Harlot. She that conceived them have done what? Shamefully. For she said, I will go after my what? Lovers. Israel, you're not looking too good, are you? We are not looking good as a nation. And I, and that give me my bread and my water. In other words, you're going to cut off my provisions? Don't worry about it. I'll go to the Gentiles. I'm not going to submit to your authority or your rule and do things the way you say, Yahweh. So Israel voted with their feet. They were going to serve the nations. My wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. Gomer was under a rule. She didn't like the rule. But she knew where to get some provisions other than the provisions that was being required of holiness. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns. Hosea said, I'm going to make it so bad for you. I'm going to hedge up your way with thorns. Every which way you turn. I'm going to make a wall that she, you ain't going to be able to find your paths. I ask you again, where's the men that in this generation talk like this? And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. Can you imagine? You run after your love, now your lovers don't want nothing to do with you. You had all that confidence in them, now they don't want you. You look at America, are we not the all sky on the road over here? Huh? We become Israelites because we know, understand through the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? Now they don't want nothing to do with us. Uh oh. That's true. And she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. And I think, you know what? I am in a messed up state. I think I'm going to go back over here to Hosea or Israel. You need to wake up and return to the Father. But my question is, why go through all this? Why? Why? Why go through all this? We already have the, the, the king of the universe. And then we're going to inherit the kingdom? You tell me how in the hell the nations and the Gentiles can compare to that. 
Understand while we're here on this earth, we're going through a wilderness experience because we are wicked. And that place was prepared in the wilderness because it had to be, because it, it was prepared for us to go out there so we could be tested, proven, and tried before we could go into the promised land. Where we at today? In the wilderness. Where we on the proven ground right now to see if we are worthy to inhabit the kingdom. To inherit the kingdom. Now the question is, how you doing? We seen how Israel did. No good at all. Uh oh. I'm going to go return my first husband. For then it was better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn. You mean tell me you've been sitting in this house all this time. You don't know you got corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they have prepared for Baal. And that's something for Baal. Is that amazing? You turn around, you give her all these provisions. She turn around and give it to Baal. What does the Israelite women in captivity want to do today? They get provided for, you know, some favorite man. The first thing you do, you want to go buy a wig. You want to go buy some perfumes uh, made, made with pigs and stuff. And buy a bunch of earrings. They want to color their hair like an like a Easter egg. We go get gold and silver and we want to put idols around our necks. Therefore, I will return and take away my corn in the time of thereof. That means in the time of harvest. When you expect the harvest, y'all say, I'm going to take it from you. And my wine in the season thereof, and I will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And everything, all the provisions I gave, since it wasn't good enough, I'm going to wait. Time of harvest come, I'm stripping it all from you. You know, the father means business with us, brothers. You understand this, right? Y'all see the reason why I stay on us men so much? I mean, I hit the women and stuff because, you know, they are the weaker vessel. You understand what I mean? But, but the responsibility of it is on you. And now we discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers. And none shall deliver her out of my hand. They, they, these nations that you trust in, they ain't going to be able to deliver you from the Father. Y'all hearing Israel? So you better change your attitudes. And your minds. You better get your hearts right. While the time is good. And I will cause her. I will cause all her mirth to cease. Her feast days. Her new moons. Her Sabbaths. And all her solemn feasts. You know all these things that you went. And committed adultery with, against the father with. You know you developed Sunday. And Easter. And Christmas. And made up holidays. And holy days. And, and on your own. And stuff. And Outside of what he said. I had somebody. They asked me. Uh, and what they're doing. See these people. They don't understand what they're up against. On, on, on these social media networks. You know every once in a while. Y'all see I answer a few questions right. Or make some statements. They don't like my answers. But I give them to them. And he says. Uh, oh, what about Derek Prince? What do you think about Derek Prince? Um, and, and what did he say? Was he a mighty man? Was, was he a mighty man? I said. Did he keep the commandments? Did he teach men to do so? I still ain't heard nothing yet. There's so much of that, huh? Isn't that something? Because to be great in the kingdom, you got to do what? Keep the commandments. I already know the answer. They don't know the answer. I, didn't, I don't have no heaven hell put nobody in, but don't set up and call somebody mighty man because you think you got something and you don't know who you're up against. It's crazy. But see, this is the arrogancy that we have in this, this society, though. You know what I mean? Everybody values their opinion, and their opinion is gospel truth. You you know what I mean? Nobody's wise but them. 
Hosea 2.12. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she have said, these, these are my rewards that my lovers have given me. The only reason I'm giving it to you because you're giving up some. And I will make them a forest and the beast of the field shall eat them. Everything your lovers gave you, I'm going to devour them too, said Yahweh. Look at the curses we under in this society. Huh? And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with what? Earrings. And I, I still got Israelite women that want to try to take me out. I don't see why I can't wear my earrings. Your problem is not the earrings. Your problem is your heart. You in rebellion. Your heart is deceived. You are in rebellion. So I see why you can't see why. It's a heart condition. The earrings is just there to test your heart. Yeah. And her Jews. And she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith who? See, Hosea and Gomer, they was just something for Israel to look at. To see how we were doing the father. And I still submit that we are still doing the same things today. Some of us. Some of us are serious. Hallelujah. Some of us going to make it. Some of us the earth going to open up. Compare Hosea's and Yahweh's attitude with the men of today. After all we just got finished reading. See, with a submissive daughter of Zion, you don't, a man don't have to speak that way. He can speak kindly. He can speak softly and speak tender. You may have to rise up every once in a while, but that'll be his attitude towards an obedient wife. Is that, you understand what I mean? You don't have to speak roughly. You don't have to speak like that. The only time you talk like that is when somebody's out of order. Do you see the reason why we get the message that we get today? Because why should he speak kind to us? What have we done for him to, to serenade us? Huh? As a people. What have he done? To deserve the sweetness of his voice in our ears. See, all this contrast one to the other. Men today do not have this, no, do not have the stomach to stand like this. Only a few. What was the intent of all of this? To make the wife that is earned to come to her senses and return. We know that Yahweh gave Israel a divorce, right? Huh? Now look at us. We way on the other side of this thing and look what he's done. He's redeemed us. So you see the reason why I, I can't do like these people do out here who play in assembly, play in church. No, I'm thankful because I understood my condition. I know where I come from. Does that make any sense? I was under the mire. Under the squalor. Hallelujah. He reached his hand down in there and picked me up. Glory to the king. That's why I serve him the way I do. And you should do the same. I will again proceed with the book of Hosea next scripture study. All right. We gave you a lot to go on. Are y'all hearing me? We gave y'all a whole lot to go on. All right. And, and I'm sure you're going to have to watch this again. But the idea, Israel, is, is to, for us to have the attitude to, after all this great cloud of witnesses have gone before us, we, we on this end right here, we can look back and say, you know what? I'm not going to be a fool. All right, you're a fool if you see these mistakes and then you go repeat them again. you wise if you learn from the people who were fools. Are you following me? That's when you're truly counted as wise. Because you can look and, and you can receive wise. I don't want to do that. So, and this society has tricked us so many ways 
into believing that we're serving the Father when really we're self-serving to ourselves. And, of course, you know, your opinion is an idol as well. Because many people make an idol out of their opinion. They exalt it above Yah's word. Are y'all listening to me? So, you re- you know, we have, we have a gauntlet that we're literally up against. Yes, he's dealing with us. Yes, he's opening our understanding. And yes, he's having mercy, extreme mercy on us. Are you following me? And that, these be sure, I don't expect for these people to, to understand when I tell them, come out of Christianity. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm really hard against Christianity in case you hadn't figured it out. Because I'm doing everything I can to scream and holler and shout. Why? So I can get stoned. These people were not, man, if, if, if they ever came and locked me up, they would have, these people would actually throw a party. YouTube, man, they were, subscribers would go up 50,000. They would, we got him. And think that they're doing y'all a service. That's what a reprobate mind is. Over and over and over again. It's, it's, it's a remark, wouldn't it? And they're only after you. That's, Satan is always after the remnant. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So I'm supposed to get attacked. I got big shoulders. I understand that. You, hear, you follow me? Smite the shepherd. Sheep will scatter. So you take every attack on me personal to you. That's the way you should see it. Every attack on me is one personally against you. It really is. You follow me? I'm in a certain role. We're all in the roles and we need to make sure that we're doing the roles the way that y'all created us to do it. And if he chooses to exalt us in the role... Which really truly ain't exalting like you think it is. <laughs> How would you like to be a prophet and you, you have your mind set that you're getting ready to marry this woman and y'all say, oh, you think you are, huh? Oh, yeah, I am too. Oh, you really? And then all of a sudden, y'all, now what you going to do, boy? <laughs> hmm? These are real men just like we are today. I was listening to someone that, that um, you know, we have hindsight, 2020. Hindsight is always 2020. And I was listening to someone this evening while I was uh, in the shower on YouTube, and, and, um, and, and he was going over the sin of Abraham and Isaac, you know, about them denying their wives when they were in their enemy's land because they feared that they were getting ready to get killed for their... For their good looking wife. You know what I mean? And he said, I don't understand, man. I can't see it. I've never done nothing like that. I said, Do you hear the arrogancy of this? Do, do you hear the arrogancy of this? I said, Man, I'll tell you what. Take hindsight away from him. Put him in the same shoes. Now, we're talking about the fathers of the faith, patriarchs, huh? The, the principal. And these are, I, I told Carl, I said, man, Abraham and Isaac got more faith than, damn it, all of us put together a thousand times over. Got more love for the Father. And I said, you see, but you see how people talk today? Y'all see the reason why I said, man, I must be going mad. I know I ain't the only one that thinks like this. But it sounds good, don't it? Oh, I'd never do that. I'd, I, woo-wee. And that same one, more, he gets more fear struck in his heart when the police pull up behind him with them lights on. And he talking about he'd never do something like that. Boy, man, I tell you, the arrogancy, the audacity of Israel, take heed and hear. Faith come by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of Yah. And you can't hear without a preacher, and he can't preach except he be sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how beautiful are the feet. They getting there too. Huh? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Y'all all right? I hope y'all really truly spend some time and go back over this again. And let these sands sink deep down in your hearts. Let us stand. <clears throat> I got a bunch of people calling. I got a few people calling here. And the other Austin and stuff. Now, it, it is amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? See, I, I did that on purpose. Usually when I'd go, you don't never hear me announce, I'm going to Georgia. Because I know what happened. Next thing you know, everybody want to show up at, at uh, the, the place down there in Georgia like as if it was a regular old meeting. Now I got people calling here. Even though I, I put it on the video, what did I say? See how stubborn and hard-headed we are as a people? Huh? This is not an open meeting. This ain't for you. This is for the children of Israel who have made themselves known who we know. This is for our, a family. Well, I'm part of the family. How long have you been listening to me? Two years? Do we know you're not? No. Have you ever made something? No. Do you ever watch certain? No, but I watch YouTube. Ain't that what you dealt with today, Sister Nelly? And then watch this. Well, well, who do you think he is? I know what I am. That's not in question. But you see the, the audacity of people today, though. That's why we tell you, come here and make yourself known. Because I told you, it ain't going to be easy for you to come and join yourself to it. Because just like the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and, and the Lord added unto the church, daily such as should be saved. Wait, hey, well, if y'all were added, I said, well, damn, if he added, he's going to give me a clearance. <laughs> Isn't that right? He's going to add them out with two or more witnesses. If somebody that came up in that and that want to be added, you don't think them apostles wouldn't have known? No, oh, you ain't that. Get out. Now everybody, Pastor Dow's coming. Come into South Carolina and everybody want to go bombard one of our home assemblies. Now, them faithful Israelites from North Carolina, if they choose to come, they're coming. The ones from South Carolina, they're coming. Because we have limited space. And it ain't for you. You should have done what I told you a long time ago, but you're stubborn as hell. You learned the nature of these nations. And you have no honor and no respect. So I'm going to beat your ass with this word every chance I get. These people, boy, I tell you. Now watch. I bet they have a case of the rear end on that one. See, Christianity has destroyed us. Entitlement. Entitlement. Abba, y'all, we thank you for all things. We pray to sin sink deep down our hearts in the magnificent and mighty overcoming name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all be encouraged. Shalom, saints.